One other thing that was really starting to become uncomfortable was my ring. Now, now, matron, not that ring. I mean the one on my finger, the one Anthe's mum had given me when I visited her in Greece. I could not, however hard I tried, take it off. I tried coating it in washing up liquid, but it wouldn't come off. I tried sliding thin wedges and levers down the side, but it wouldn't come off. I even hired a team of -of tug-of-war professionals to pull and pull and pull, and still it wouldn't come off. I looked at my hands, and they looked at me. The ring was not for turning. My hands had always been big, but had they really grown so big that I could no longer take this ring off? Dad was convinced it was water retention. Not being medically trained, I decided to bypass his advice, but I couldn't offer a solution to my large hands either. Maybe I was just fat. In the end, I resigned myself to the fact that I just had big hands and that they had outgrown a ring that had fitted me when I was young and svelte. So, in the summer of 2006, having spent hours tugging at a ring that wasn't going to budge, I went into a jewellery store in the centre of Bristol and asked them to cut it off. It's not that I wanted to get rid of it, because I didn't. I loved it. But I didn't have the option to take it off, and that was somehow worse. The jeweller went to the back room and returned with a bag of tools. Once she had found the appropriate device, she asked me to lay my hand flat on the counter, and with a good amount of strength, she cut one side of the ring, then the other. She stood back and beckoned me to take it off but still it wouldn't move. My hands were so big that the ring was actually stuck onto my finger. I bent the bands of the ring back, snapping half of it off in the process, and prized the ancient coin off my throbbing digit. At last, it was free. Footnote 107. And boy, did it look angry. My finger was not the only part of my body that was causing me aggravation.